Hey, I'm Jesse. We've arrived at verse eight of 1 Corinthians chapter six. Paul is taking the Corinthian believers to task for the, their litigiousness, suing each other rather than relying upon the church discipline process, which never fails. He's using it in the context of trivial cases, but I've never seen this process fail. I've even seen it used to make restitution financially uh, for, for abuses that take place within the church where somebody gets cheated out of money, what have you. Like I've never seen the church discipline process fail. And he brings up something that would get him canceled. Right, here's verse eight. Instead, you yourselves do wrong and cheat, and you do this to brothers and sisters. This comes on the heels of his two rhetorical questions. Why not rather be wronged? Why not rather be cheated? Like we talked about yesterday, it is far better to be wronged, be cheated, forgive, and move on than it is to drag things out in a protracted legal process that, by the way, is not going to bring any healing to your heart, even if it brings money to your bank account. And sometimes that process leaves in its wake a mass detritus of collateral damage, having done way more harm in your journey unto healing than if you had just shown grace, if you just shown forgiveness. When he asks the question, when he, when he reminds us rather in verse eight, you yourselves do wrong and you cheat, he brings up something. There are no 100% innocent people. If you've been the victim of wrongdoing, it may be in your case that you are 100% absolved of any complicity in the circumstances of what happened to you. You were just crossing the street and then somebody wasn't paying attention and then hit you with their car. You are not to blame at all. You had the walk signal. Everything is legally cleared in your case. But this doesn't mean that you've never wronged anyone. And it's a good reminder that when you've been wronged, that you've wronged other people too. Because if we are wronged, we can suddenly feel the sense of entitlement and we can suddenly be absolved of all wrongdoing, as it were. We are currently seeing a, a healthy shift, a healthy turn in our, our legal culture, where we went for a while there uh, in which victims of any sort were beyond uh, being tried for their own complicity in their given cases. The fact that Ghislaine Maxwell, for example, is being tried for her crimes as beginning as a victim of Jeffrey Epstein and then going on to be an accomplice, uh, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. It's possible to see someone as an innocent victim in one regard and then also guilty of other things in simultaneity. You're not holding two contradictory thoughts in your mind at the same time. You're looking at a human being just like yourself. This person who has been wronged has also wronged others. If you're the aggrieved party, Paul reminds you, you've wronged people. You've cheated people too. And he goes on to reframe it once again. You do this to brothers and sisters. This is your spiritual family you're talking about. Proverbs says that a man's wisdom gives him patience and it's to his glory to overlook an offense. I'll never know how many people I've offended, but they've just forgiven me and moved on because they have wisdom and they show grace. I'll never know that. So it helps me when I'm wronged, when I'm cheated to remember, look, I've been shown grace, so I'm gonna show some grace here too. I've wronged people, I've hurt people myself and it doesn't help things if I go on a if I go on an absolute spree of just like hurting people in the name of my own healing I've wronged people and so I need to show grace when I'm wronged because I've been forgiven absolutely I must absolutely forgive if Paul had written about this you know uh, in, in modern American culture you would be canceled but it's true and it helps us when we're wronged to remember that we are the recipients of grace and we, uh, we ought to then show grace, especially to our family, our church family. These are our brothers and sisters in Christ. This is a family matter. You don't need to bring in the pagan Roman court system, Church of Corinth. You don't need to bring in the secular court system, Washingtonian Christian. You've wronged people too. So keep this in mind when you are wronged and when you are cheated.